Do you wait for everything to be perfect and lined up straight before you make a choice? How hard are you trying to get everything in your life right? What if jumping in and getting messy is one of the ways to find out what works for you? Discover how being willing to mess up can create the phenomenal life you truly desire. Get ready to quit judging and start embracing all of your messy adventures. Now, here's your host, self-declared messy living expert, Katrina Fava. Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Messy Adventures in Living. Thank you for joining us on Monday and kicking off your week with us. Um, it it actually it feels like Saturday for me. I just spent the last four days working, so Mondays for me are usually Saturdays, which is probably why I'm in a really good mood every set Monday morning. <laughs> um, so yeah, thanks for being here today. We are talking about uh, resistance. The title of our show is Resistance is Futile, and we have an awesome guest with us today, Annie Gelfand. Um, she is um, joining us from Peterborough, Ontario. Right, Annie? Hi, Annie. Hi. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. Thanks for waking up early to be on our show. (laughs) You know what? Thank you for acknowledging. (laughs) 9 a.m. is usually my quiet time. I'm not usually (laughs) talking to people very much at this time, so it's really nice to be here. But then again, I've been up since 4 a.m., so there you have it. Yay. Thanks for joining us. So... Um, I'm going to introduce you first, I think, before we um, discuss the sh- the topic for today. So Annie is a master certified coach and intuition whisperer. She's been coaching individuals, teams, and relationships to make radical change since 1997 and has been in business for over 30 years. She's a certified professional co-active coach through the Coaches Training Institute and completed several thousands of advanced coach training hours. Andy brings a contagious love of life to her clients, as well as a diverse range of life experiences, which includes a 15-year career in strategic marketing and market research in the consumer goods and health fields, a Master of Business Admin degree, and learning the art of meditation in rural India for eight years. Andy mentors new and professional coaches, assists her clients to make the quantum leap into courageously discovering and living their dreams while lovingly supporting them throughout. Annie's clients are usually highly intuitive and high-performing professionals who are hungry to discover and live their full potential. Annie's stand is for unapologetic expression of who you are at your core based on the foundation that no one knows what's best for you better than you, making you the expert on everything new. She is deeply committed to integrating body, mind, and spirit in the workplace. In addition to helping her clients lead more abundant and fulfilling lives, Annie is certified certified in numerous holistic healing healing modalities, including being a reflexology instructor, artist, writer, and avid cat lover. Cool. So today, oh, there it is. Today, we are talking about resistance. Resistance is futile. Do you ever find yourself held hostage by your reactions or by those of someone who confronts you and you find yourself feeling so very wrong? Do you believe that force and aggression are required to change something? Have you spent your life resisting and confronting? We've had a lifetime of experience. What if something easier and more effective is available? Uh, Thank you for joining us uh, in exploring this uh, different possibility. So, I just want to start off by saying that this topic got created by a really cool Facebook post that Annie posted one day that I happened to see and really loved. Um, and I'm going to read it because it's, cause it's awesome. Um, so Annie posted, it's amusing to watch what happens when people who like to be angry are met with no resistance. They aren't quite sure what to do with it. Some huffing and puffing ensues for a moment or two, and then they go off searching for a new depository for their anger. So glad I have the tools and know how to deal with it, and most of all, not to make myself wrong about their overreaction. I loved it. It was one of those like, oh, where's the love button? (laughs) 
Um, I especially liked when you posted how they go off searching for a new depository. It's like, not here. Go find yourself a different place to <laughs> to to push at. That's amazing. So tell us a little yeah. bit about that post, Annie. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, yeah, I really wasn't kidding when I said I had a lifetime of, of this. You know, it's really an interesting thing when we start looking at some of the lifetime choices that we've all made, and especially family choices of who our parents have been, or mothers in particular in my case. And, you know, my mother was that sort of very typical, very angry, 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 angry woman, always looking and, you know, doing anything that she could to to just try to get people to be mad at her. I, I just, you know, and I used to spend my life trying to help her out, trying to make her, um, you know, calm down, try to fix her, I guess, is really what I was trying to do. And mm-hmm. then making myself very, very wrong for not, for not uh, being able to change anything that she was doing. And then that carried on into, you know, relationships and... Right you know, friendships and on and on and on and on. So I just kept running into this wall. And you know that definition of insanity, like you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. So one day I just said, this has just got to change. What else is possible? Because this isn't freaking working. And I'll tell you what my wake-up call was. Um, This is actually... uh, probably back in about uh, the year 2000 and my mother had done something and she was you know I had become very upset with her because she was not she was she was doing her her typical thing and I was angry and I basically punched a cement wall with my hand and wow. that luckily I didn't hurt myself miraculously seriously but that was like yeah. what the fuck am I doing to myself this is just, that was my wake up call. That was the day I said this changes now and so I began to look for what else was possible. And then I discovered um and I know this is this is a radio show that discusses the tools of access consciousness and you know having all of my tools and all of my skills and everything that I know everything has been phenomenal and and very very helpful and access consciousness tools have just taken it to a whole other level of you know and so what I have now got in front of me is when that angry person shows up, I can actually just stop and and be really, really present because I'm really curious, Petrina, because obviously this created something. It reminded you of something, right, something that you've encountered. So can we turn turn it back over to yeah. you. I'm just curious. So we, yeah, yeah, interesting because, um, I mean, I, I have a million examples of how I'm met with resistance on a daily basis um, and, and anger, but I also learned to use push and to use anger to create change because that's how my mom did it. Um, not always and not necessarily within the family, but um, the, the example that I can think of is like, you know, um, uh, customer service, you know, um, I, I, uh, calling the phone company to get something different or, um, you know, complaining about something at the store. And m- my mom used to say to me, you're too soft. Like, y- you're too nice. Like, why are you trying to be nice to these people? Like, you need to be, you need to get angry. Um, and I watched her do it. And I, I actually saw that a lot of times it worked when she did it. So then I made myself wrong. I'm like, wow, she, she's right. Like, I'm just a big wussy. Like, I need to get mad. And, um, and so I, and, 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 and I've done it and I've done it and it's worked. But then I feel horrible after. Like, I actually physically feel horrible. I notice the enormous contraction in my body. I'm shaking. Um, I hold on to it for like the whole day. You know, like I review it over and over and over and, you know, I get off the phone with Rogers or whatever and I feel like crap for the rest of the day. And so, again, when I learned some of the tools of access, especially um, the one about lowering your barriers when someone's actually, like, pushing at you or coming at you or being angry with you, um, yeah. and I get to practice that at work. <laughs> I work, I'm a nurse, yeah. right? So I work at a hospital and I get a lot of push at me. And it's really interesting what happens when you actually lower your barriers and just let that flow right through you and then see that, like, when they're done, all of a sudden they're like, Oh, 
that's what it reminded me of when you said they find a different depository. It's like they can't, they don't know what to do with it when you're not pushing back. So then it just kind of fizzes out. <laughs> and they go, and they go yeah. okay, next. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love that you brought that up. Um, I was also, by the way, I think many of us have been bulldozers in our lives. And we've, you know, we've used that energy to get what we want. And I have never been very good at, 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 at hearing no, <laughs> you know. And, mm. and that same force, that same, you know, I will have this, um, which is a bit of a different, I mean, there's a way to have that work for us and there's a way for that to work against us. And I, and, I, and I think one of the things that really, really has worked really well for me is the reminder that I am an infinite being. And, you know, if that rings true for you, if that is something that you go, yeah, you know, I know that's true. I don't require proof. I just know this is true. So, number one, if I'm an infinite being, I can choose to be any energy, any energy that will work, that will create something greater. I am also aware right. of consciousness and oneness and working not just for the my good, but for a greater good, too. And I'm not meaning, you know, goody two-shoes. I mean, you know when you're creating a greater possibility. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I have, too. I've sat on the phone with Rogers and Bell <laughs> and all these different companies, and, you know, we all have been mm -hmm. there. And what my my husband is actually in me. I really call this my superpower. I am I'm really good now at it's not force anymore. It is intensity, and it's very yes. very different. And there's a presence of being that. So you you mentioned. Uh, I'd love to just share a couple of tools that anybody who's listening to this call will really get because that barriers down thing is probably number one. Mm -hmm. um, and what that what that looks like is most of us, when we're encountering an angry person looking for a depository for their anger, you know, the first thing we do is go into, you know, protect, you know, walls up, like the right. Star Trek, you know, series, shields up, rah, 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 red alert, red alert, right? Totally. Everything goes into everything goes into lockdown, and the only thing is, is that you have now closed yourself off from your awareness. You've shut yourself down and you've gone into your head and now all that deliciously amazing wisdom which is available in your body, you've just cut off. Mm -hmm. So it, it's actually counterintuitive. Most people who have been trained in, in uh, holistic and healing modalities have been taught to protect, put yourself in protection, and blah, blah, yes. blah, because we are so psychic, we pick up everybody's shit. But here's the thing. I mean, there's a way for, you mentioned another tool, pulling it through you. So first things first is you find yourself in that situation when someone's angry and you just, number one, instead of pulling back, because we all go into that beyond for a moment, right? So mm -hmm. just choose. This really is choice. Choose to stay present, number one, and just go, wow, this person is really fucking angry. And this has nothing to do with me. <laughs> You had a right? little because giggle if there. They're really a, <laughs> well, because their reaction yeah. is it's yeah. so obvious when it's out of proportion to the situation. Yeah. So sure. barriers down, barriers down, like you just breathe and go barriers down, barriers down, which is the opposite to what you'd think. And when you are just right. space, because in barriers down, you're just being space. You ever try to hit space? <laughs> right? You yeah, can't. Exactly. You can't hit space. So that anger, yeah, so that anger coming at you just kind of goes right through you, and there's nothing to catch it. You're just being infinite being. You're just being space. So they look at you and go, hell, I'm not getting any reaction from this person. And really an angry person is looking for a reaction. They're looking for someone mm -hmm. that they can, like I said, deposit the anger with. And then they just go on to the next person because you're not giving them what they're asking for. So they move on. Right. So and in the, and it all, yeah and and also in the in the meantime what you're saying is like it rather than putting up your walls and then cutting off your awareness then at least you can be aware of what's then you can start asking some questions and be aware of what's required to change it now whereas when your barriers fly up and you're just in resistance how can you be aware of what's required to change it right Exactly. Well, don't you find, though, that when you're in a situation like that, you go right to your head? Like, you yeah. actually go right up to the very top of your head. Like, you know, you couldn't go anymore. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? You're like, you're just not there. You're not in your body at all. So 
Yeah, yeah okay. barriers down and then be present and ask yourself questions. And then the other one that I love, um, so a, a great question, by the way, to ask is, what energy, space, and consciousness can I be to create this with total ease? Nice. Right? And if you aren't familiar with access consciousness, as I imagine some people may not be, it really mm -hmm. is just a series of tools that are just really helpful. And we use something called a clearing statement that goes back to um, changing the energy. And it's just a bunch of words that really work. It's like the magic wand that just changes things. And um, so we always follow it up with, with a, a clearing statement, which is right, wrong, good, bad, pod, poc, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And if you want more information on that, clearingstatement.com. Yeah, great. Um, Thanks. We're going to actually yeah. just take a short break, and then we're going to come back and keep talking more about this. I'm, I'm excited about this conversation. It's already rolling like crazy. So you are listening cool. to Messy Adventures in Living on a to Zen FM with myself, Petrina Fava, and my lovely guest, Annie Galfin. We're talking about resistance. Come back soon. Do you wait until all the traffic lights are green before you get in your car? Of course you don't. Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't even think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert Katrina Fava every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, and 6 Pacific on A2Zen.fm. How much more expansive would your life be if you were willing to get messy with your choices? What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava. To participate in today's show, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, in Canada 613-800-8736, in the U.K. 033-0001-0625, or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also ask questions or comment by email by sending to Petrina at PetrinaFava.com. Now, here's Petrina with more Messy Adventures. Welcome back. You're listening to Messy Adventures on, in Living on AtoZen.fm on this awesome Monday morning. We're talking about resistance today and um, all the... Uh, places and all the ways that we can change it to create more ease and more fun in our lives. So we left off um, speaking with our guest, Annie Gelfin, um, about some tools that you can use to change um, change a situation when someone is really doing push at you and really uh, blasting a whole bunch of crap and anger at you. Um, we talked about lowering our barriers and allowing it to flow through us um, and asking some questions. So I wanted to just look at like I wanted to look at what you said about um, uh, having anger, actually looking at anger as something different, um, intensity, potency, um, 
um, this is something that we talk a lot about in Access Consciousness as well, which was like another one of those things that for me was just one of those wow moments when I was like, cool, I don't have to make myself wrong when I'm really angry. Because <laughs> like I said in the beginning of the show, I actually saw where a lot of times um, doing push or or that thing I was labeling as anger was actually creating something. Uh, it's just that sometimes then I was not feeling so great afterwards. Um, and so when you start to look at the fact that sometimes intensity is actually required. So what we're, we're not saying that you need to be a doormat, right? And that you need to stand there and let somebody shit all over you. Um, but actually you having allowance and lowering your barriers and allowing their anger to go through you um, is kind of like punching space. And I love that analogy. If you can imagine, if you've ever taken like a physics course and the space between the molecules, right? When you go to punch something and all you're punching is space, then you're not actually hitting anything. And that's essentially what you're doing when someone is freaking out at you and you're just dropping your barriers and letting it go through you, which is different than letting it come at you. And then it's just like they're punching space. And so they're like, they don't know what to do with it. It's like, what is this? This feels weird. Like this person's not reacting. Very different from doormat energy. Um, and still looking at when intensity can is actually required and can create a change. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Annie? Oh, my goodness. I love that, Petrina. That's awesome. First of all, I want to make a distinction because it, there's a few things kind of getting glumped together, I think. It, there's there's the, you know, the, the out-of-proportion anger of someone coming at you with their reaction about something which never has anything mm-hmm. to do with you. Even if you've been a catalyst for it, even if you've done something maybe a little out-of-proportion, um, maybe you made a mistake or maybe you said something that offended them. It, it doesn't matter what it is. The point is is that there is never, ever, because that's kind of an abuse, right? When somebody comes at you and pushes their their anger at you, that's a little bit of an abuse. And in, in my world, that's actually never acceptable. So mm-hmm. So that's one distinction of when someone's coming at you with their anger out of proportion to what the situation is. In that case, that's where I don't, if I go into resistance, what you resist persists, right? So that's where you go into barriers down, you breathe and expand your energy and ask questions like, okay, first remind myself to be present, that this has nothing to do with me, and what energy, space, and consciousness can I be to be at ease with this? And then usually it could be something like, no, this probably isn't a very good time to talk. (laughs) You're really upset, obviously, and so I'm going to go now. And you take care of yourself because you can't change them. You can only take care of you, right? You can't ever change anyone. So that anger is that's one piece of anger when someone's coming at you with out-of-proportion anger. There's the second kind of anger, which I think is the intensity anger that you're referring to, which is actually a potency, whether it's yours or someone else's. So that's when, uh, you know, someone you know or someone's done something that is unacceptable to you. It just doesn't work for you. And, and that's when you, and again, being, reminding ourselves that we are infinite being puts us a choice to be whatever energy is required. Because when you are reminding yourself that you are that, you can be any energy, right? That's the key. You can be any energy and ask yourself, what energy do I need to be here? What energy is required here that will create ease with this or create something greater or yeah. whatever the question is? That's when you can use your intensity and say, you know what, this doesn't work for me. And there's a delivery of being here. This is about your being that has nothing to do with words. This is energy. Mm. This is an energetic presence, aggressive presence that is, and and I never now, never give up being me. And so a question to ask is if I were truly being me, then what would I be? Who would I be? What would I say? What works for me? Those are great questions. Those are great questions. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, what's you said something about um, it's an energy and not about words. And um, I, that really popped when you said it because I think a lot of times that's what we do 
like that's in our usual reaction when somebody's talking to us or blasting at us. We're, our walls fly up, and then we're like, well, what am I going to say next? What am I going to say? What am I going to say? Like this defense, and it becomes about the words, right? And it's like what you said before. It becomes all up in your head. Um, and then you, what you just said is, I love is that it's actually about an energy, and sometimes um, words are not really what's required like or maybe you only need to say one word or two words but it's really about the the space the energy and the space that you're being um and not diminishing you that is is the change that that is what creates the change and not necessarily about the words which is i think what we're used to or what we've learned to do that's awesome thank you that's great yeah yeah, yeah. eleanor had a question I, I i'd like to ask it's kind of a little bit on the lines of what we're talking about um, her question in the chat room is, what do you tell yourself when you start to feel a wrongness being projected on you? Um, so I, 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 is it, is it that you're, Eleanor, what you're asking is that someone's trying to make you wrong about something? Is that what you're asking? I think that's what she's asking. I'm talking about wrongness, not anger. Okay, yes. So her question is about what do you say or do, what do you tell yourself? when you start to feel a wrongness being projected on you? Yeah, so the very, very, very first thing after you've done the barriers down and you're, you know, you're being present and you have to be present in order to get that this is being projected at you, who does this belong to is a phenomenal right. question to remember because that when a pro- what we tend to do, by the way, is we tend to make their wrongness ours. Aren't we adorable, right? Like this sense of wrongness that you're picking up, it isn't even yours. And and I don't know why we ever started doing this stupid shit, but mm-hmm. we started taking on other people's wrongnesses if that's going to change. And all that does is, yeah, the more the merrier. Everyone's miserable. Like that just doesn't work. That strategy doesn't work. So mm-hmm. when you are being space, when you are in front of somebody who is in that out of proportion anger trying to make you wrong, and you're just being space, they're left with their, like there's nothing, you're not reacting, you're not, um, I'm not, again, let's be really clear here, this isn't about being a doormat. You're being an energetic presence of you. That is not a doormat, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Being the aggressive presence of you is an intensity. It's an energetic presence, period. It doesn't require words. It's an energy, when somebody comes at you and you are that energy, being space doesn't mean you stop being you. You're still being you. And they're trying to make you wrong and you're being space. There's nothing for them to grab. They're trying to punch you energetically and you're being space. There's nothing for them to punch. Yeah. So they're left in the isolation of their anger. And then you can choose what what would I like to do with this? What would work for me? And you could say even something like, you know, the the best of all is, you know what? You're actually really upset here and obviously this isn't a good time to interact. So maybe we should take some space and just go away from each other right now. Or you could say, you know what you said right now is just really mean. Did you mean to be that mean? Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, I I was um what I was just thinking of too was, uh, you know, how much are they making you wrong because they have decided that they're right. So it's this whole right and wrong universe, and like what's going on for you, Eleanor, in your own universe that you are actually buying that you're wrong. So like I kind of I, I I know about this just slightly, <laughs> but you know every time I would go to talk. Like, I remember um, wanting to discuss something with someone, like my husband or my mom or something, and I'd be like, I'd have good argument in my head. I'm like, okay, I know I'm right. Look, I have all these points, and I have all this argument, and I am going to blow them over with my argument. There's no way they can tell me I'm wrong. And so then I go and I have this conversation with my husband or my mother or whoever, and, um, and then they start to talk, and then I go, oh, my God, you're right. I am wrong. Oh, that's right. I'm. She's right. Like I did do that. That's awful. And it's not about like looking. It's not about like you. It's like what you said a little while ago too, Annie. Like maybe you did do something that may have triggered something. Um, but if you don't buy that you're wrong, then you know is the judgment gonna is is what they're blasting at you gonna impact you? It's a similar thing of hitting space. If if you don't buy it, 
then that creates space, right? And so then when they're going to blast you with this, there's space there. Whereas if they tell you you're wrong and you buy it, right, you believe it, you're like, oh, yeah, I am wrong. How much does that put up barriers? And now they're hitting something energetically, even without words, you know? Yeah, yeah. Really cool stuff. Nice. Um, I'm. We need to take one more break. This is, I love that, like, we can't stop talking. <laughs> so we're going to take another break and come back and keep going. Go so you're listening fast. to, I know, it's craziness. Uh, you're listening to Messy Adventures in Living on A to Zen dot FM. We're talking about resistance and all the cool tools that we can use to change it. Um, we'll be right back. Do you wait until all the traffic lights are green before you get in your car? Of course you don't. Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't even think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert, Katrina Fava, every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, and 6 Pacific on A2Zen.fm. How much more expansive would your life be if you were willing to get messy with your choices? What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava. To participate in today's show, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, in Canada 613-800-8736, in the U.K. 033-0001-0625, or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also ask questions or comment by email by sending to Petrina at PetrinaFava.com. Now, here's Petrina with more Messy Adventures. Good morning. Welcome back to Messy Adventures in Living on a to Zen FM. Um, I am Katrina Fava, your host, and I'm speaking with my awesome guest, Annie Gelfin, about resistance today. Great topic. Yes, I agree, Eleanor, in the chat room. Thank you. We're having a lot of fun talking about resistance. See? Just talking about resistance is fun. <laughs> so how much fun can you have? <laughs> Who knew we could be laughing so much talking about resistance? So how much fun can you have playing? It actually kind of is fun, and I'll tell you, like, uh, um, I get to play with this a lot at my job. <laughs> um, so um, for those of you who don't know, I'm a pediatric nurse and um, I work at Sick Kids in Toronto. And so I get met with a resistance a lot um, from various people. So doctors and um, parents often are angry or they want something. They really want to get something. And so they they try to get their way by really doing a lot of push and like aggression and uh, intimidation. And it's it's really fun to just stand there and play with that thing of just like lowering your barriers. And I actually sometimes have to like, I, I'm very aware that sometimes I'm smiling and the person's really pissed off. And sometimes I have to be like, okay, Patrina, like maybe don't laugh right now. Like, cause <laughs> although who knows, you know, if that actually could be a contribution, but so many times I'm like, okay, Patrina, like don't laugh because it's funny to me now. And it's great to be able to just be vulnerable and be like, Okay, you done? 
and then ask some questions, you know, and often I'm asking um, what's required, what's required, what's required. Like that's kind of what's going on for me. What's required here? What's required? What do they need to hear? What, you know what I mean? Like what questions do need to, can I ask them and that kind of thing. So it's actually kind of becoming fun. <laughs> so before we get carried that, away no, again, that... yeah, sorry. I actually really want to just talk about what you have coming up because I find that when we leave it to the end, it gets um, we get squished and, and we don't get to talk about what you have coming up. So tell us, you've got a lot going on right now. Tell us a bit about it. Yeah, well, Classes, you know, book. <laughs> there's so much going on in my world at all times, <laughs> which is one of the things that I love about my life. That one of the things that um, that is just really, really first and foremost on the burners is uh, I wanted to offer any listener who is either live on this call or um, will be listening to this in the future the opportunity to get a video tip and free ebook uh, by going to radicalwisdom.com and signing up for my newsletter. And if you hit the contact button, um, there's a little form to fill out as well, and just so you, it goes in together with with the subscription, then I will email you a video, fabulous video, and a beautiful ebook called uh, Intuitive Inquiry, uh, which is uh, a new a new series that I'll I'll be starting in the future. The second thing that I'm coming up with, which begins, it launches on December the 8th, is called 30 Day Boot Camp for Sassy Creatives. And um, I am putting, I'm putting that. That's really about because we're coming to the end of the year. I have done this for many, many years. Um, as we come to the end of the year, we do a review of what we wanted to have done for the beginning of the year. And of course, it's the end of the year, and you're looking at, oh, man, I didn't get to this, 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 and this again. And why didn't I? And what can I put in place? And so it's really about doing an assessment of you know, letting go of the things that you're not really that that juiced up about and then really what can I put in place as a structure to, because if you're like me and you're full of ideas, sometimes those ideas get lost and um, really what's a way to get them into action. So what one burning idea or ideas do you have that you really, really want to put into play that you promised yourself you'll do it? This will be an intense group, an intensive group. I've got some fabulous guests every week. We're going to have a different guest. Um, we're Aww. kicking off with Sherry Taylor, who uh, is the joyful writer, uh, followed by the following week with Stephanie, Richard, uh, Stephanie Richardson, who is the ha aha catalyst. Um, and I'll be uh, the third week. We're not sure yet. The fourth week is uh, is me. So it's going to be a great opportunity to uh, get in on something, you know, whatever you want to get done. Wow, that sounds really cool, Annie. What? Yeah, and I'm fun. excited. I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. So yeah. Um, and so I just wanted to for anyone who's in the Greater Toronto area, I have a couple bars classes coming up, and I'm actually um, teaching an access body process called MTVSS um, on Saturday for anyone who's interested. And um, I just wanted to plug my book a little bit um, that launched in October called Creations, Conscious Fertility, Pregnancy, uh, and Birth. Um, and actually, that kind of take it kind of ties into this topic a little bit that I wanted to something I wanted to look at about resistance. Um, we've been talking about people, you know, like uh, dealing with people who are doing push at us. But I was kind of like in preparation for the show, looking at like what else do we resist? Like what things do we resist in life that then, like you said at the beginning of the show, end up persisting or getting bigger? And in my book, I talk a lot about how I was really um, resisting. This, I was I had a miscarriage is what my chapter is about and I was in such an enormous place of resistance while all of that was happening and while I was in the hospital and really resisting um, a lot of medical intervention and re I was just in an enormous space of resistance so I wanted to kind of look at that with you a little bit Annie like what happens when we resist like what happens to our bodies um, it's so easy to resist sickness and resist illness um, and there's a difference mm -hmm. between having allowance for our bodies and then actually resisting something. Like, you know, how many of us are so petrified of getting a horrible disease, you know, so scared of getting cancer or heart disease. And so we put up these walls and we resist it so much. 
And then what happens in our bodies when we're doing resistance? Oh, my God, Petrina, that's a whole topic all by itself. I know, it's a whole hour. I know. <laughs> but, yeah, I just wanted uh, honestly, to, like, yeah, make people aware of, like, what happens. This can actually, this kind of stuff actually can happen in our bodies, too, right? Our bodies are listening. And what are we creating in our bodies when we're doing resistance? Well, yes, absolutely. Um, I've had a lifetime of, of uh, illness, actually, up until about, uh, I would say, six years ago, 10 years ago, I used to get sick all the time. And, you know, if you've ever had anything, I've had some serious stuff, I've had not serious stuff, but, you know, have you noticed that when you get something in your body, the first place is to go wrong. This isn't acceptable. I'm not allowing this. This is wrong, 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 wrong. (laughs) Right? And you resist it in a big way. And what you resist persists, meaning... You know, you've heard when you look at a molecule, you change the energy of that molecule. You've now created something into being. So you've given it energy. Now it's becoming more. It's becoming bigger. So there's that. But there's also making it wrong. And that piece about instead of, and I, and this is what I would go, what's wrong with me? That's always what the, the question would be. What's wrong with me? Yep. Instead of including our bodies. So you know, when when pain comes, our bodies are trying to message us. They're, our bodies are our best friends, even though we treat them like our mortal enemy. You know, what if we could actually just be willing to listen to our bodies? Gary Douglas, the founder of Access, says, if you, te- if you treated your dog like you treat your body, your dog would frickin' run, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when when pain comes, when illness comes, instead of going right away to what's wrong with me, what about just going, okay, what is right about this that I'm not getting? And again, barriers down, like allow yourself to be present, to expand, and to start going into question. And question doesn't look like what the fuck is wrong with me because now it has a question mark on it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> right? That one doesn't it's, count. It's, it's really not expansive. Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's not an expansive. And that is another right? Yeah. It's a, it's a phenomenal tool, light and heavy. Like, is that heavy or light? Right? That's really heavy. What's true for you is, is light. So you want to find that question that's light that kind of makes you laugh. And it's like, okay, so, you know, is your body trying to get a message to you how present are you being with that, with your body? How much right. judgment have you just projected at your body about what it should eat, about what it, you know, how it should be, even how much sleep it should have, mm-hmm. right? So in a way, it's, it, so you what, just said something like yeah. your body is messaging you, and that's kind of like what we were, we've been talking about. It's like someone, it's almost as if there is another being there talking to you, and you're putting up a wall, and so then you can't hear so it, it it is actually very similar, right, to when you're talking to a person. Your body's like, hello, 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 hello. Yeah. And you're like, no, 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 I don't want this. Yeah. I don't want this. And then you, yeah, and then you put your walls up and then you can't hear um, or you're not able to be in the space of question to ask the question that would actually change it. That's actually a really great analogy. Yeah, lovely. Very nicely cool. put. Yeah. Okay, we're going to uh, we're gonna go to break. And I was like, another break. Yes, another break. We're going to go to break and then come back and keep um, talking <laughs> I love talking it. About Keisha wrote, hands on my ears. Hands on my ears. <laughs> la, 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 la. We're going to come back, and um, there's a question in the chat room. So when we come back, we're going to look at that question. And um, you're listening to Messy Adventures in Living on a to Zen.fm with myself, Katrina Sava, and my guest, Annie Gelfen. Come back soon. Do you wait until all the traffic lights are green before you get in your car? Of course you don't. Are you waiting until you have everything perfect to begin living? Most of us have learned not to take any steps until we have all the information to make the right choice. What if the opposite is true? What if it's choice that creates awareness? Are you willing to make lots of messy choices so you can begin to see the possibilities that you didn't even think existed? Listen for Messy Adventures in Living radio show with self-declared messy living expert, Katrina Fava. 
every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central, 7 Mountain, and 6 Pacific on A2Zen.fm. How much more expansive would your life be if you were willing to get messy with your choices? What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? You're listening to Messy Adventures in Living with Petrina Fava. To participate in today's show, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, in Canada 613-800-8736, in the U.K. 033-0001-0625, or you can Skype us at a2zen.fm. You can also ask questions or comment by email by sending to Petrina at PetrinaFava.com. Now, here's Petrina with more Messy Adventures. Welcome back to Messy Adventures in Living. We are having a lot of fun talking about resistance and how we can change it. And having fun is actually one way to change resistance. So how much resistance are we changing this morning just talking about resistance? (laughs) Uh, um, megaton. <laughs> um, megaton. Awesome. Um, and I just want to say, I'm like bopping in my seat to that music. I don't know if anybody else is doing that. To the commercial music, I kind of, I'm really happy I chose that song. It's, it's, it's cute. Okay, so <laughs> moving on. We have a question in the chat room. Um, Eleanor is asking, when I am doing resistance, is it my infinite being, my body, my mind, or something else that's doing the resistance. Who is doing the resistance? She's asking. Do you wanna you wanna go for that, Annie? Sure. I actually wrote her some questions in the chat room. Mm. So it's oh, a yeah. great thing. You know, one of the things that I that I love about coaching and also really resonated with me about access consciousness is is really um, that we know what we know. And it's always been my my kind of tagline in my business is that I don't tell people what they know. I ask them questions so they get to know what they know. So I'd love to ask Eleanor, when when you're noticing this resistance and you're asking, is it my mind, is it this, is it that, it's like who does it belong to? Does it actually change the energy of it? You want to, it's, it, or is it more like a Mobius strip of an endless sort of infinite loop of, well, why, right? Why is the why is the sky blue? Like you really want to ask the question that's going to change the energy that will free you. That's the kind of question we're looking for, asking the the question that will change the energy so you get free. So does that question change you, or would it be more helpful to say or to ask yourself? Is this resistance serving me in any way, or would it? Or what other energy, space, and consciousness can I be that would create more expansion, more space for me, with total ease? Which one gives you more freedom? Which one releases limitation? Does that yeah. help at all? Um, yeah, I think I think that's great. Yes, Eleanor's saying yes, it does. Awesome. Okay. Um, great. Yeah, and I think um, what I've become aware of with these tools too is how much is just talking about bodies. Like, um, I don't know if it's necessarily my body that's doing resistance. Like, I don't know. I don't. I know it's not. It, I, it's when I check it, it, it's not that my body is doing resistance. It's that I'm doing the resistance, but then I can perceive it in my body. And I can perceive the contraction that it creates and the dis-ease that it actually creates in my body. So it can, 
I think it can easily feel like your body is resisting, but is it actually your body that's doing the resisting or is it that you're perceiving the contraction that comes from that resistance in your body, right? What a great question. Yeah, I mean, our bodies are kind of like nature, right? So animals and trees, they have no points of view. They don't have resistance. They're just being, right? right? Our bodies are just like that, but our bodies are so brilliant. They take on our projections just like our our, our animals do. You know, if you have a cat or a dog and if something's going on with them, it's usually because they've taken on a projection from us. So same thing with our bodies. How much of what is going on in your body is something you have now projected at it? So that piece that you just said is you've noticed contraction. That's that's the first place for me that I notice. My body goes into clench. You know, my my whole, like my muscles just go into clenching, my chest gets heavy, my stomach feels heavy, everything feels like blah, right, locked up. <clears throat> That's when you can use those tools, barriers down, and breathe, and then choose to expand, and then just ask what energy, space, and consciousness, or how much more space can I occupy to create more ease with this? Which is a great question. I love that one, actually. And Me too. Just, I love you know, it. Is it. How much space can I occupy? Yeah. And yeah, then, is and it 100,000 kilometers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Cool stuff. Wow. You've done a lot of talking. <laughs> <laughs> I am awesome. the talking I queen. <laughs> I know. Me too. And we got together on the radio. <laughs> this is Gab time, too. It's so fun. Um oh. So, so yeah, like we have about three and a half minutes left. So is there anything you want to oh say about God. resistance to wrap up? I know, right? Yeah, I always find these shows go so fast. They're so much yeah. fun. And uh, yeah, like let's just remind everyone because this is such a common, you know, again, having coached for over 20 years, this is something that comes up almost every single time with clients. So let's just go over the steps that people can take when they are encountering either their own resistance or having an angry person in front of them, but that resistance space. Because you really, really want to find that space that works for you. It's that thing, you know, you put on the the, the oxygen mask before you take care of someone else. You have mm-hmm. to love yourself. I mean, I it, it's that piece about... Um, you know, Maya Angelou gave a great quote, I don't trust people who don't love themselves, but say I love you. Um, you really have to be in that space of self-love, self-acceptance, just really. Um, so you put yourself first and you find that, that space of being happy for yourself, number one. Yes. Yeah. And expand, relax, breathe, be present, yeah. barriers down ask questions, and and you'll know what to do. You'll go into your own wisdom. You'll know. You'll know. Right. Trust that you know. Trust that you know and lower the barriers so that you can hear it, right, so that you can hear your knowing. Yeah. Yeah, um, some people and, hear it. Some people, right. you know, like it comes to different people in different ways. Yes. Some yeah. people be, be aware of Sometimes it it's really not bad. a subject. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Exactly. Cool. You'll be aware. Well, Thanks, Annie, for coming on Messy Adventures in Living. <laughs> Thanks for coming to play with us today. <laughs> um, I think we've started off Mondays for some people in a great space. Um, we've had lots of fun changing resistance today. So thanks for joining us. And, oh, yeah, hope to, hope to have you back sometime soon. I would love um, to. And um, don't forget the RadicalWisdom.com, that yes. 30-day boot camp, and sign up for the video and ebook. Awesome. Um, so thanks for listening to Messy Adventures everyone in Living Everyone. Please join us next week. We will be talking to the lovely Christine McIver. Um, next Monday we'll be playing with her, talking about, I actually don't remember what we're talking about, something about stepping into your potency <laughs> and owning your potency and not, not backing off or something like that. Have a good week, everyone. We're happy to start off your week with um, some fun and some laughter. Talk to you guys soon. Goodbye from Messy Adventures. Thanks, Patrina. <laughs> Thanks for playing with us on Messy Adventures in Thanks. Living. Patrina Fava will return next Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. Central, 
7 a.m. Mountain, and 6 a.m. Pacific on A2Zen.fm. We'd love to have you join us again. Until then, have fun creating your phenomenal life, mess and all. What would you say if I told you that you